U.S. Ambassador Nikki Haley came here determined to thwart a resolution drafted by Kuwait that called for measures to protect the people of Gaza. She tried persuasion, going around other members of the Security Council. Here, as she approached the Ambassador of Peru, she can be seen mouthing the word, please. A warm greeting for Israel's ambassador, Danny Danon. He, surely aware, she also had procedural tricks up her sleeve. She wanted her completely rewritten version of the resolution classed as an amendment so it would be voted on first. There were heated discussions among ambassadors, but this month's president of the council, Russia, ruled against her. And things only got worse for Haley. She pleaded with council members to support her draft resolution and reject Kuwait's. We strongly encourage this council to vote against Kuwait's resolution and acknowledge the concerns of Hamas by voting for the U.S. resolution. Each of you have a choice. You either support Hamas or not. This vote will tell the story. But the story that unfolded was not the one Haley wanted. When Kuwait's draft was put to a vote, it got 10 votes in favor. It only didn't pass because Haley had to use her veto. And then the second vote on Haley's own resolution. This is where all her tactics backfired. Her allies abstained, others voted against, and a moment of diplomatic humiliation, she was the only person to vote for her resolution. I don't believe that there was in the history of the United States, in the history of the United Nations, in which a country to submit a draft resolution and not to receive except one single vote, the vote of the party that did submit that draft resolution. If that is not the epic of complete failure, I want you to tell me what is failure in the Security Council. Thank you. It was a bad day for Ambassador Haley, but the real losers are the people of Palestine, particularly in Gaza. With the Security Council divided and deadlocked, there is no end to their misery in sight.